Okay, so I, good afternoon to everybody from my side. Thanks, first of all, Federica and then all the organizers to make feasible again this very exciting course for the students and also for scientists that had the opportunity to be in touch with cutting edge science. <laughs> I enjoyed really uh, both subjects before and uh, I will also highlight the role of the fluocytometry in our research in the mainly work that I will show you today that is the RNA vaccine to fight cancer. And uh, what Stefania highlighted nicely indeed, the, the, the fax is a very important uh, instrument also for our daily activity. And I have to tell you that for us it's also important not only for phenotype, for, for to check the phenotype and understand the, pheno the type of cells, but also the function. So something more deep than also uh, simple, let's say, characterization of cells. So the talk of today, I will go very briefly to the RNA lipoplex technology because it's published, but for you to learn and to understand um, the long history of RNA vaccination platform that was generated in Tron uh, and then lately moved to BioNTech, of course, as everybody knows. And then the RNA lipoplex uh, in the checkpoint inhibitors uh, treatment for the HPV positive cancers. So, if we go shortly to the history, let's say, of, um, of Tron, uh, we started really long ago with the aim of develop of mRNA individualized immunotherapy and for treat of cancer. I don't want to give you too much the detail because as you can see, everything is published, but the overview of this pipeline is important that we could take biopsies from tumor page, can, cancer patients and uh, sequence every the cells that uh, come to the tumor sample, align with the blood sample that was considered as a healthy tissue, and then find mutations that are specific for the tumor sample. So based on this screening in silico, then is prioritized which mutation can be used for the generation of the vaccine. And of course, intermediate is the production of the mRNA encoding for the top 20 or top 30 mutations for the cancer patient. I will not go in the detail of the structure of the mRNA because it's something that again is uh, described in the review here, but I can tell you simply that um, um, a lot of optimization has been done in the past to perform um, essentially stabilization of the mRNA for the in vitro transcription with the CAP, UTR, and so on. But the most important was definitely to deliver the, the mRNA. And this is something that came um, from uh, uh, two different uh, um, aspect of the usage of the mRNA. So the first uh, um, was the immunogenic mRNA, that is the one that was born, let's say, 20 years ago, approximately, with all this research. And then was the one applied for cancer immunotherapy and infectious disease. And I will show you the infection disease that are HPV related, uh, uh, but also cancer related, that then allowed the development of the non-immunogenic mRNA but also with the same approach, with a broader range of approach for mainly vaccination, but also protein replacement therapy. So the most important information that the, you need to, as a take as a, a take home message is that the immunogenic mRNA is indeed immunogenic, is composed by uh, normal uridine, so TLR7 and eventually other um, TLR pathway signal can recognize the double strand RNA and then induce a potential of good uh, pot in inflammation. The non immunogenic mRNA, the one that you learn. I think everybody now knows very well what is the corona vaccine composed. Um, uh, carry non-modified uh, uridine with a pseudo um, called pseudo uridine that dump these uh, uh, inflammation response in the cells. In addition to that, uh, additional single strand RNA purification is generally performed to enrich and to eliminate whatever other signal pathway innate in the immune, innate immune system should be induced. So the advantage of these two is that this is very monogenic, very potent, but 
The advantage of the non-immunogenic is that it's very long transcribed. So it can be more silent and very long prescribed. But I don't enter to the detail of the vaccine, in this case of the corona, because it's something that is not on the aim of this lecture. So this is the schematic representation, what I presented before, that the aim is to produce the uh, GMP uh, RNA manufacturer, uh, mRNA that are able to treat the cancer patient. And in this case, now I will move to the uh, delivery of the system. So generally, and this is, was the first approach, was uh, injected intranodally uh, for first clinical trials in melanoma patients. But then, of course, uh, with the uh, ultrasound guided intranodal injection was really uh, laborious, let's say. And then we come for the development of a systemic delivery that I will describe later on. So where do you inject intravenously in patient? And in this case, the mRNA is protected by specific uh, uh, lipids. So um, this is the work that Lena and my, uh, Mustafa published a while ago, where described the technology. And then uh, here, mainly for you, it's important that this, based on the charge of the particles, you can target the spleen. And it's mainly the one that we are using uh, today and in the work that I will present you. But not only the spleen, but mainly also other lymphoid organs. Um, this is also true in human, as you can see, after treatment with the RNA lipoplex, and this is the way that we call the formulated mRNA. Uh, in human, you can see the high metabolic activity of the spleen indicating an act, uh, induction of the immunoresponse. Um, this is a schematic representation that show how the RNA lipoplex is delivered intravenously in human or in mouse, like uh, the work that we'll present you today. And then it's mainly uptaken by antigen-presenting cells that are dendritic cells, but also macrophages. The most important aspect for the induction of the immunoresponse is that the dendritic cells can also migrate in case of a peripheral location. But in the spleen, they can prime also, obviously, CD8 and the CD8 and CD4 T cells based on the antigen that is expressed on the mRNA. Uh, this is the data presented in the paper and they show the potency of this uh, um, vaccine. So the first is the TC1 tumor model where we have the E6 and E7, but mainly E7 uh, encoded mRNA that early you inject. So at day seven post-tumor inoculation, on day 10, you have a tremendous prevention or rejection of the tumors. Um, the other aspect was the IV model of CD26 that then was um, inserted, uh, the tumor model is IV, so is um, mimicking the metastasis tumor model that are depicted here, that are seed in the lung of the mice. And then if we start treatment pretty early with the uh, neoantigens encoded by these uh, tumor cell lines, as you can see in the green line, you can prolong the survival of those mice with a bene strong beneficial effect. And in addition to that, also in another tumor model, again, IV, again, monitoring the luminescence uh, um, carried by the, the tumor cell lines. If we use the TRP1 vaccination, the tumor are really strongly controlled uh, by the RNA group and not from the relevant or control. So this is some preliminary data, um, old data, and uh, also in my in human, these are data that show that then we are able to follow upon different vaccination the two the T cells specific for the antigen encoded by the mRNA in the vaccine um, and encapsulated in the vaccine. And this in this case was you knew your case or that was a fixed vaccine. And this is the platform that I want to do the, show you. I said cancer neoantigen, but also cancer uh, fixed antigens are also in the platform of for cancer patient. And this come the project that was carried on by the very uh, enthusiastic students, Christian first and Nadia as a second, that they uh, merged the activity to in study the immunotherapy for um, HPV cancer. And first of all, uh, why HPV? Because uh, first of all, it was an interest of uh, still, despite we have, of course, uh, in the new generation already a prophylactic vaccine for the HPV. There are a lot of still cancer um, uh, patients for HPV um, 16 and 18, not only uh, viruses. And then in addition, uh, 
the moment that Kristen and, uh, initiated the PhD program, we have a clinical trial, uh, and then now also a second clinical trial of patients with the PEMBRO and mRNA vaccine produced by BioNTech, obviously. Um, this is, again, the schematic representation that I wanted to show you because we will focus on the vaccine that encode only CD8 epitopes for a HPV 16. This is the famous cancer immunocycle. What I just want to let you know that whatever we do on the periphery with chemotherapy, radiotherapy in the tumor side that we promote tumor cell death or dendritic cells or antigen presenting cells uptake the antigen, deliver it to the prime, to the draining lymph node to prime the T cells. But we have, of course, our RNA lipoplex that we go, uh, we inject in uh, intravenously, where on the spleen, as I showed you before, induce also priming. And so we wanted to combine the, uh, the, the, the RNA lipoplex in the sound cancer immunocycle to get the major benefit to cure patient. So this is the first uh, uh, example, let's say, and again comes the um, fluocytometry as a basic uh, tools for us to individualize and detect in circulation in the blood of mice antigen-specific T cells. And this is a technology that is called multimer or uh, tetramer or pentamer, but mainly is a, a technology that allowed you, due to the fluorescent dye, to detect the T cell, um, T cell specific for a specific antigen. And those CDA T cells car carry the TCR specific for that epitope called uh, the minimal antigen. And so as you can see, we could uh, vaccinate twice the mice once a week. This was our standard protocol uh, with immunogenic RNA, as I said, with a pretty high dose, but we can go even lower. And then based on the injection, we can on day six already after the first vaccination, but also again on the second vaccination, we amplify the response. Nicely for us to see that indeed the two vaccination carry really a very high number of circulating T cells. And those scheme of vaccination was definitely also prolonged in tumor bearing mice where we implant DC1 tumor subcutaneously. You can see the tumor growth up to day 22 here, but if we inject a day 7 or a day 10 or a day 13, the first uh, um, RNA lipoplex encoded E7, we can see the different effect, definitely completely preventing tumor growth, strongly, de pre uh, strongly pre uh, pre um, decreasing the tumor growth, or here, because we start at day 13, almost after uh, the third vaccination, we see that the tumor start to reach very tumor size as depicted here in the picture and then rejected. But if we stop, of course, our vaccination, that this is the day 13, indeed the last one, we see that the tumor relapse. And so here comes the survival also to describe you that based on the te uh, early you start, better tumor survival you can have. And of course, this is the highest rate on survival benefit. Um, now we go on the more basic part. Let's say we were interested to see what is ongoing to the tumor. Of course, we were interested to see uh, all the T cells, but not only. And this is actually the um, the idea to go to analyze with the, in our case, we have a, a Fortessa or Canto 2 uh, with a 14 color fax panel. And uh, recently we will have also a symphony. This is nice. <laughs> I see, I learned from Eric and Rico a lot before. Um, so we were uh, able to distinguish a lot of myeloid cells in a different gate that we can do excluded and then in concatenated and looks called excluded uh, gate strategy. But then also for the lympho side, again, all the CD4, CD8, the Tregs and the NKs that were mainly the lympho side that we were interested to follow. And this is now also on the myeloid part. I wanted just to give you this as an example that we published previously. We dissected the tumor associated macrophages called TAM that is known to be uh, classified uh, M1, M2 that I need to stress. It was not always a black and white, but you can see indeed that the modulation of the marker from the M1 and M2 assay um, class 
you can see here the inos on the y-axis and the pectin the seed the thumb here and you can see based on the treatment that we perform we can increase the inos specific t cell uh, thumb uh, macrophages and based on this specific treatment that is the pectin blue we can down modulate here so you can see here the cd206 uh, positive cells that is another M2 marker. And then in class two, we can upregulate, like with INOS, it will be an M1 marker. So this is depicted that we learn how to phenotype the marker, the macrophages intratumorally. And then we went to the project, of course, of the TC1, where we'll dissect all these therapy all together. Um, we dissect the different population, the CD8, the CD4, NK, T-Rex, and TAM, and we could see that the RNA lipoplex induce, I apologize for this noise, uh, apolo um, increase the activity, the, the number of CD8 and CD4 intratumorally, as you can see, the proliferation of the cells and also induce the um, upregulation of INOS positive, so M1 macrophage, but dramatically reduce the M2 macrophages. So this was a nice effect, but we were more interested also on the T cell and, as I said, also in the effect of function. And again, here is not in an animation, but we can follow step by step. So first we follow, of course, again, the multimer, so the E7 antigen specific T cells intratumorally that are depicted here in the TC1, but also in another tumor model that is EC3 also expressing. And we can visualize the CDA T cells after RNA lipoplex treatment that are heavily enriched intratumorally. And nicely, we can see this multimer by fluocytometry. So this population was very dominant in the tumor, as you can see, we can reach up to 50%. And then among this population, we want to dissect with a particular protocol that you can find in the paper nicely described. If you have any question, feel free to email me. Uh, you can find in the uh, paper the email. And then um, you could have the dissection and understanding the defect of function of the cells. And as Enrico previously showed, this is the Gramsam and interferon gamma, two of the most um, standard effect of function molecule that we follow in the in fluocytometry. And these are the cells that are showing very strong double positive, but also granzyme positive cells. And in addition, other two that are the, uh, the other one is the TN alpha that we can also depict the infiltrated tumor T cells also on this way with the producing, uh, producing a lot of interferon gamma, but also double, uh, double positive for TN alpha and interferon gamma. And this, as you can see, was strongly increased in the group where was uh, E7 um, vaccination. Both on that, we went on the RNA sec again. This is something that, of course, uh, was interesting to approach with a large spectrum of different molecules. But to make the story short, it was also nice that Christian was able to show the correlation that more interferon gamma you have in the in the tumor, more BDL1 expression that we can also see indeed that despite the tumor are very good and rejected, and um, um, rejected by the T cells, we have a tremendous increase of PDL1 expressing on the tumor cells as depicted here on the uh, graph that I missed the, pulp, <laughs> the animation, but it was depicted here in the, yeah, I, I don't see now, sorry. Um, in addition to this, uh, um, to this uh, exploration, of course, we came to the conclusion that we wanted to have the, uh, sorry, here, this is PDL1. We want to do the combination therapy on these mice because as I showed you before, the mice in a single treatment with RNA, they are able to reject very well, but then all of, most of them relapse, giving a very medium and very poor survival overall. In this case, was only done with a one RNA vaccination. But if we combine RNA vaccination with anti-PDL1, the checkpoint inhibitors, we have a tremendous benefit in the tumor rejection. These are 10 up to the 15 my rejected tumor and with a prolonged survival. So this is, from my side, the conclusion that I showed you, the systematic RNA lipoplex vaccine expands strongly antigen-specific T cells in preclinical model and in human. Uh, can is a platform that is already 
define and use in combination therapy with a checkpoint inhibitor. I showed with a PDL1. I didn't show, but it's published with CDLL4 within another approach with another antigens. And uh, the systemic RNA-LR vaccine has been also um, tested in syngenical in a synergy with a local radiotherapy, something that we published already with the CD4 antigen. For CD8, we have a submission of a manuscript. And this successful, let me know that in, in this uh, work, we publish also the triple combination therapy that we combine RNA lipoplex with the checkpoint and the radiotherapy. And this because we always combine this treatment to follow and to help BioNTech for the clinical studies. And for that, I come to the last slide where I can uh, thanks all the people, of course, involved in the work, especially Nadia and Christian, because they were the one treating the animals, but of course, Sebastian and Mustafa um, supervising the work with the um, exciting uh, discussion with Ugo Shahin and Özlem Turici. And then, of course, the animal uh, biotech uh, for provided an RNA synthesis and formulation. And with this, I thank you for your attention.